Hello and welcome to the Smile Teachers Self Love Podcast. I'm Sean Kay, the founder and director of Smile Teachers. And this week I'm here to share some more information and strategies with you about self love. And today I'm going to be very vulnerable. I'm going to share something about my journey that's deeply personal and it's something that I'm working through at the moment. And I'd love you to tune in, follow along, try the strategies yourself this week. And please, most importantly, give me some feedback send me a comment, a message, reach out by Instagram, Facebook, or email, and I'd love to hear your experience with self-love. Now, what I'm talking about, every butterfly has to go through a metamorphosis during its lifetime. And to grow into an adult, they need to go through four stages, where they're an egg, they're a larvae, they're a pupa, and then they become an adult, or a fully grown, fully fledged butterfly with beautiful colors and amazing wings, that they can do incredible things once they go through that painful process of metamorphosis. Now, we all need to go through this at different stages of our life. And that life cycle of a butterfly can take anywhere from one month to one year. So why am I talking about butterflies? Well, this process of metamorphosis is very similar to the journey of self-love that I've been on for the last six months and my lifetime. But the last six months intensively, I've really focused on what does it mean to love myself, my shadows, my weaknesses, my strengths, my capabilities, to really step into my identity. And that's what I'm here to show you today. It's a journey of resilience, it's a journey of courage and vulnerability. And it's not dissimilar to the life cycle of a butterfly, where I've been on a constant path of growth and of evolution. I had this lingering, negative stress and anxiety bubble hanging over me around March this year. And it was something that I felt like I really didn't matter. I had so many negative voices in my head trying to drag me down. And I had these little things coming up all the time like, you're not good enough, Sean. Who do you think you are? You're not good enough to be talking to these people. You're not good enough to be sharing these experiences. You're never going to make it. People don't want to hear what you have to say. Why are you even bothering? Just go back to your simple life. Just go back to being a teacher and just do that because you're dreaming and you're never going to make it. And I hit this period of really intense pain where I lacked energy. I didn't have any inspiration or drive and this overall feeling of just being a worthless piece of shit. And that's what it really was. I was a nothing. I was a nobody. I was a peasant, as my mate Andrew calls it. I was constantly battling with what was going on inside and self-sabotaging my own growth and evolution. And I wasn't going in places where I wanted to go. It was that simple. But after the end of 2018, where you know I had some serious things happen, I found myself in this painful and sudden evacuation from my beloved teaching post at the end of 2018. And I'd been in this constant spiral of negativity where it was just pain and more pain and more pain, where I had a lot of self-doubt, I had no confidence, and I just didn't feel worthy. I didn't have any worthiness. I felt like this tiny, insignificant speck on the Earth's surface where I was just coasting. Nobody really cared about me. Nobody really wanted to see me do well. Um, that's how I felt. And my life felt like nothing but this tiny little egg floating through the universe, just like a baby butterfly, a tiny little egg. My big vision and goals for Smile hadn't changed, but my belief in myself and being able to do that had started to become this darkness inside of me instead of filling me up with light and sharing that with you. And if you actually go back and look at some of the videos or posts from around March, April this year, there's a clear difference in my energy and who I was as a person because I was really lost. And while being busy and stressed and doing all these things and trying to find out the answers and trying to get it all together, being soulless and feeling lost, I felt like a burden to everybody else around me. And I actually felt like a burden to my own family, my own parents, when they loved me and supported me, but I felt like a burden. And I was stuck, I was stagnant, um, I felt trapped, like I was inside my little egg, my little shell, um, feeling lonely, entrapment fragility, and really this was the beginning of something more, but I had to have a realization to tune into that. 
Now, during this emotional time of soul searching and, you know, reaching out, I connected with a great friend and a mentor of mine who reached out and shared some really insightful and powerful words that really touched me. And his prescription was to stop doing and stop trying to figure it all out and to slow down and surrender and to surrender to the pain and the suffering. And he advised me to just stop and stop searching for all the answers and solutions. Stop waking up and looking for the feeling of stress and anxiety and just to surrender and sit with the feelings, thoughts and emotions that I was experiencing. Because the universe was really trying to tell me something. It was trying to teach me a lesson. But I was so shut off and I was so empty and I was so lonely and, and hurting that I wasn't looking for the answers. I was trying to find and search, but I wasn't in a position to receive them from the universe, from God, from a higher power, whatever it is that you believe in. There was something out there. There was a message for me. And the question that he asked me was, do you believe the universe has your back? And I responded emphatically, of course, of, of course I do. And that led to him sort of saying, well, just trust that everything's going to work out and just trust that the answers are going to come to you. The answers are going to be there and they're waiting for you, but you need to be in a state of being still and being silent so that you have space to receive those answers and you have the emotional capacity or the container to receive what you're looking for. And there it was, my new term, my favorite term that I've used with so many schools since was to be still and silent. And that when we practice that stillness and that silence, we can truly listen. And if you actually look at the word silent and rearrange it, and this is a great activity to do with students, show them the word silent on the board and say, what other special word do you see with these letters? And the word is listen. If you truly want to listen and you truly want to hear the answers, you need to learn to be silent first and foremost. And it's only when you can do that, that you will receive the answers that you're looking for. So I made this commitment. I made this commitment to myself to be still and silent and to start to grow. This little egg was on its own journey. I was on my journey of metamorphosis. I was on my journey of growth and transformation. And although I felt like a shell of a person on the inside, Really, when I looked close enough and I tuned in and I tapped in and I plugged in, I knew that there was an infinite depth to who I was as a person. And I'd been through pain before. I'd been through suffering before. I had a mental illness. I'd been burnt out. I knew I could bounce back and I knew I had the resiliency to come back bigger and better. And so at this point in time, what you need to know is that the coolest thing about butterfly eggs is that when you do look close enough at that egg, that little speck, there is actually a caterpillar or something inside growing. There's something so powerful growing inside. And there was something powerful growing inside of me. And I began to listen. I began to practice the stillness and the silence every day. I stopped being on my laptop and my phone so much. And I was walking out in nature in Bindoon where my parents live. I was going in the bush. Sometimes I even got naked in the bush. And I was chanting and I was connecting. And it was pretty out there and spooky. And I was just feeling into it. I sat on the same rock every day, this big rock up there, this white quartz and red rock that I sat on and I felt its warmth and I connected and I started to inquire, I started to learn, I started to figure out why I had this immense resistance and pain and it was because I was slightly off course and all I needed to do was redirect my direction. I didn't know where or why or how or what I was going to do yet but I knew I had to shift and I had to make some changes and in that moment when the self-sabotaging beliefs were still lingering and I spent the time reflecting and allowing myself to feel that pain and to suffer and allow myself to be you know, frustrated, angry, sad, anxious, I still had some resentment and fear and anxiety that had manifested from what happened to me with my previous employer because really there was other areas in my life that were being impacted because I was holding on to this negativity to this anxiety, to this frustration. And I had to let it go if I wanted to move on and start to grow my wings so I could really take off with my vision for Smile Teachers. So when a caterpillar is born, it's extremely small, right? But when they start eating and they start feeding and they start growing and they start expanding rapidly, they grow really quickly when they're getting all the right nourishment. 
so their skin doesn't stretch or grow. It starts molting and shedding and you're becoming a better, 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 better caterpillar where that was me. I needed to start evolving, start growing and start becoming the best version of myself, shedding the old me, letting go, connecting with the inner child, doing the work, doing the meditations, doing the practices that were helping me to elevate and become a better version of myself. So instead of focusing on what I lacked or what I didn't have, my mindset started to shift and bring me towards things like nature, breathing, journaling, meditating, and practicing this thing called self-love. The faster I grew, the more self-love I had for myself. And I was no longer this tiny little egg, this tiny little speck. I was integrating positive affirmations day and night. Things like, I am powerful, I am strong, I am intelligent, I am a wonderful being, I am supportive. Every day, I was writing them down, I was listening to them for 20 to 30 minutes a day, connecting with Mind Valley to help upgrade my belief system, to invest in things like self-hypnosis with Marissa Peer, where I was doing these transformational healing sessions and connecting with those moments in my life that caused me to have this limiting belief and going back and meditating on it and sitting with it and filling myself up and telling myself when I was that age where I picked up this limiting belief that it is okay, you are supported, you are loved, you are amazing, just keep doing what you're doing. I even went to the farest, farest, farest extremes in some cases where I went to a ceremony, a harpe ceremony, which is an ancient Amazonian herb, went up my nostrils. It's not a drug. Don't worry. It's a plant medicine. It went up my nostrils and I spewed and I purged and I vomited and I got rid of all this toxicity that was in my body. And then I had this amazing awakening, this amazing experience that allowed me to just feel loved, feel worthy, feel positive. And the question of I am enough was starting to be answered every day. I am enough was on my wall. It was recorded on my phone. It was written in a journal. I was telling myself I am enough and I was starting to believe it. So learning to love myself became my mission in 2019. I was so passionate about telling everybody else about self-love, but I wasn't embodying it myself. And who am I to lead these experiences? And who am I to, to create these amazing opportunities for other people unless I'm doing it myself. So we all go through these periods where we may seem like a very insignificant, tiny little butterfly egg. And to the naked eye, all we can see inside is this amazing potential, something in there. But when we sit still and we get silent and we're holding a magnifying glass over all that potential of what's inside, and when it becomes clear, you see we have this beautiful, magnificent and resilient caterpillar just waiting to grow and transform and bloom into this beautiful butterfly where you can spread your wings and you can fly. So when an egg finally hatches, you would expect a butterfly to emerge, right? Well, wrong, not exactly. There's the caterpillar and the larvae that comes out that we call caterpillars, they don't stay in this stage for long. They start to grow very quickly when they feed and they nourish and they eat. So first and foremost, my focus was health. All this stress, stress was making me sick. I hadn't felt healthy or radiantly alive for some time. As a teacher, I was drinking coffees, I was eating on the run, I was eating stressed, I wasn't prepared, I was ordering Uber Eats, and alas, my man, Rory Callahan, comes to the rescue. My guts had been crooked for so long, two to three years, four maybe, of feeling like shit. And it was making it very difficult to stay focused and motivated and inspired. But I was looking at what was going on up here. What was going on with my head? What was wrong? Why was I thinking all this stuff? It was actually happening in my stomach and in my digestive system. And if you look into the research, serotonin is actually produced in the gut. And we need serotonin up here to feel good. Now, Western medicine treats the problem up here. They never look down here. So my mission and part of my self-care journey and my self-love journey was to get my health back to peak. So I started this program with Rory Callahan. You can find the link in our, in our blog on the website or online and you can connect with Rory. So imagine having a coffee and then almost shitting your pants every day. That was me on a daily basis. I would eat, I would have an uncomfortable stomach, I would feel cramped and really yuck and I would have to go to the toilet. So I started this program with Rory. And when I started, I was the lightest I'd ever been. My skin was really yucky and lacked color. It was a bit blotchy. I had huge bags under my eyes. I felt tired and drained all the time. And I was waking up so fatigued. So I started this mission to feel good about myself. 
And fundamental to all of this stuff with self-care is your health, your physical health, your body, your vessel, the only thing you get, okay? And there's this one tube from your mouth to your ass. And what goes through that tube implements and determines how you feel on a daily basis. So Rory, he's this incredible mentor, passionate guy. He's a friend. He's living healthy, consciously, and he's all about building a sustainable life for everybody. Now, thankfully, he was patiently waiting there. He'd never been pushy. He'd never been, you know, saying, I've got this program. You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. He just waited until I was ready. And then he was there to support me. And he still supports me every day through this program. So taking the time off to rest, reflect, and rejuvenate allowed me to understand where my body was at. I could tune in during that stillness and silence and see that I wasn't healthy here. And that was impacting everything else. My mindset was all about negativity. My body was feeling negative. I was just in this negative loop. So anyway, started with Rory, started the nutritional cleansing, started the 30-day program, uh, integrated intermittent fasting. He helped me through all of it, implemented some amazing products that I've been using as well that have really helped me upgrade my health. I've got so much energy. I've got so much positivity. And I just feel amazing. And people have commented on it. Like I've had people say, you look like you're glowing. Like, that's amazing. That's a great compliment for me. So I started to heal from the inside out. I started to push myself to get better healthy-wise, uh, internally and externally, training in the gym. And then just after 14 days, I started to notice a massive shift into how I was feeling and how I looked. So getting on top of this was really helping me grow. Getting on top of this was allowing me to feel amazing. And the thing that you should note at this point in time is that as soon as a caterpillar is done growing and they've reached their full size, they start to form into the pupa, the chrysalis. And that's where I've been at for probably the last few months. This chrysalis, where inside the caterpillar may look like it's resting, but really it's changing everything about itself. The caterpillar is rapidly growing into a beautiful butterfly. And that's how I feel at this moment in time. So I started to hold space for myself. I started to grow. I started to create this feeling, thought, and emotion around shifting towards my higher self, my positive identity, the person I was put on this planet to be, and the universe starts reflecting that back. Bang, I get this amazing opportunity to go to Hayman Island in Queensland and teach in a little school with seven kids and run this program however I like, with the freedom of living on an island, having an amazing community, that just came out of nowhere, bang, got it. Opportunity, bang, taken, okay? I start changing my health, I start changing my mindset, I start attracting positive results. I start attracting more people to work with Smile Teachers. I start attracting teachers who wanna come on the retreat and embody self-love. Start shifting, growing and transforming and it just starts to take on a whole new level of consciousness. And you can do this too. And I'm gonna share these tips with you very, very soon, so keep on listening, keep following along. In April 2019, I started a program with Vishen Lakiani at Mind Valley called Self Transformation. And I started to commit to this real process of transforming who I was and transforming my identity. Now, Vishen's course brings up some amazing things, but one of the fundamental things Vishen talks about that has helped accelerate my own transformation and ultimately my own metamorphosis is the truly remarkable concept of traditional goal setting being broken. Now, we've been brought up with this notion that we should set goals and focus on them intensely until we achieve them. And if we don't achieve them, we don't get fulfillment, we don't get success. Well, that's bullshit. And that's what Vishen says. It's utter bullshit. How do we actually stay on course and see these goals come to fruition? And I began reflecting and researching, and I've got all these journals and notebooks that I've had for years, five, six, seven years, started flicking through them and looking at all the smart goals that I'd set. And I was like, fuck me. They had all these pages and pages of times where I'd said, I will achieve this by this date and I will do this by this date. And I was motivated and determined and invested, but the amount of goals that I just didn't achieve and no wonder I was feeling like this little empty, shallow egg lacking self-worth. I'd rarely achieved any of those goals. So I didn't have that sense of fulfillment. I'd always been chasing the next goal before even achieving the first one because I thought it was going to make me happy. And this left me feeling insignificant. I was never obtaining what I desired. Love, money, freedom, relationships, connection, and I just had this lack of self-worth. So I had to start to do some of these techniques Vision was talking about. And I had to upgrade my systems for living, and I had to upgrade my mindset. So I started things like scripting, lofty questions, my rate of self-evolution, 
the 2020 principle from Robin Sharma and finding my North Star, my true vision. And by adopting these techniques that I learned through Mind Valley and integrating them with, with the health system that Rory was sharing with me, I was taking back my health and my energy. And this was paying huge dividends because my mindset was shifting as well. So I was on this rapid transformation. This crystallis had a shitload of movement going on inside of it. I was going through a lot. I was breathing into it. I was feeling into it. And the more positive, peaceful, and patient I became with myself, I started producing more positive emotions, thoughts, and feelings. And that fire within my soul was ignited and it was pulling me towards this bigger vision. So most people know caterpillars, they're short, they're stubby, and they don't have any wings. But within that crystallis, they start to form and go through this truly remarkable transformation. And they start to build the beautiful body parts they need for a butterfly to emerge. Well, that's where I'm at. I'm at this point where I'm constantly transforming and growing and trying to better myself. But now, days like yesterday where I feel like I need to rest, I rest. And I know that I'm going to get to everything like today. I've got a huge list of stuff that I may get to today. And if I don't, it's going to be okay because I can do it the next day. But as long as I'm prioritizing self-love, everything will be okay. So I'm going to share with you my five top tips for cultivating self-love and accelerating your own personal growth. The first is to put self-care first. So that's health, okay? That's happiness, that's gratitude, that's looking after you first. Mainly health, getting the best foods available and not compromising that. Okay, Rory talks about the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you do the right things, you eat healthy, you nourish yourself. The other 20%, you can indulge, you can enjoy, you can look at those little naughty things like a bit of chocolate or some red wine or some ice cream, 20% of the time, okay? Rory's got some powerful science, an amazing program with a massive center in America that supports all the research for optimizing your health holistically. So if you're interested in optimizing your health, please get in touch and I'll connect you with Rory. The second thing to cultivate self-love is stillness and silence. Really simple. I don't need to go into too much detail. When it was the last time that you spent a day, a week, an hour by yourself with no phone, no TV, no technology, no kids, no distractions, and you just sat with who you were and how you were feeling. Learn to listen to what the universe, God, or the higher power is trying to tell you when you're still and silent. Our week-long retreat in Bali is designed to give you that opportunity to find yourself and to love yourself. Number three, invest in self-development. Every day you should be growing. Every day you should be learning. And you need to make the investment in that. You need to set aside 20 minutes every day. And I suggest looking at Mind Valley Quest or watching TEDx on YouTube or purchase an online course. But invest in your own self-development. Number four, positive affirmations, game changer. Morning, night, during the day, in the car, reprogram your subconscious mind with positive affirmations, okay? I've shared some in our blog, so have a look at the blog. Things like You Are Your Creators on YouTube or Zen Talks on YouTube, excellent for positive affirmations. And lastly, number five of self-care, self-love, and cultivating your best life is an hour of power. Absolute game changer. Stop using the bullshit excuse of I need to sleep in, I'm tired, okay? Get up earlier, set aside an hour of your time to nourish mind, body, and soul. So 20 minutes of movement, 20 minutes of meditation, and 20 minutes of learning every morning. And I guarantee you, you'll be more productive, you'll be more energetic, and you'll be in more flow just by doing that hour of power. Start with one of those things, okay? So to recap, you've got self-care first, stillness and silence, Invest in self-development, positive affirmations, and hour of power. Start with one today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Start building your wings, okay? You can do it, okay? And I believe in you, and I love you, and I'll support you all the way because I know how powerful this stuff is. My journey of self-transformation is still in progress. It always will be. I don't have any wings yet, okay? I'm not a butterfly. I'm not flying around. I'm preparing for the first flight. I'm almost there, ready for takeoff. But I can openly say... I'm still working on that feeling of embracing that I am enough. And I know that I'm worthy and I know that I can be loved and I know that I'm supported and I know that I'm significant, but I have work to do. And I'm going to keep improving and expanding my inner world. But I do believe I love myself more every day. And this has been a result of committing to self-love. And that's what I want more teachers to commit to because when you love yourself first, you can have a far greater impact on your students and you can truly teach them how to love how to love themselves, 
how to love each other and how to love this amazing, abundant, beautiful universe that we live in. I'd love you to connect. So please send me an email to seanhappyteacher at gmail.com. Visit www.smileteachers.com.au or find us on Facebook or Instagram because really as a collective, we grow stronger. I've got a self-love breakfast happening in Sydney on the 1st of September. I'd love you to be there to join us for a self-love breakfast. Have a wonderful morning, share some amazing things. And just remember this, when the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis, both of the wings are gonna be soft and folded against its body. This is because the butterfly can't fit everything in at once and it can't fit everything inside that pupa or that cup. But when you take time and you slowly emerge, you start to become the greatest version of yourself. Your wings will form, you will get stronger, but you've got to start doing the work. I'm slowly emerging as a confident, intelligent, and highly motivated young man. I love that I live with positive energy and vibrant health. And I love for you to be a part of this journey. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Please do me a massive favor and like the podcast, like the Facebook post or Instagram page. Please share, tag, all of that helps. I don't have a big budget to keep growing this business, but the way that I grow is with more teachers becoming a part of the journey, more teachers cultivating self-love and more teachers understanding that self-love conquers all. Thank you for tuning in. I love all of you. Have a wonderful week, wonderful day, wonderful year, wonderful lifetime. And remember, spread your wings and fly.